Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Let's just turn this machine on and we'll kind of conclude the video a little bit uh, for the control panel build for the cask washer. So what we've got here is the control panel front which you've all seen me build and a couple of things on the inside has changed to enable this to function correctly so let's get in and have a look first of all if we just pan up a little bit you may notice that up at the top the relays have changed now that is because we had these solid state relays in initially and they wouldn't work properly and it took me a hell of a long time to figure out the problem and it turns out that the Inkbird IDTE timers give out a 12 volt uh, pulse width modulated supply DC which I thought would be sufficient to switch uh, as an input signal to switch the solid state relays on and off but unfortunately what seems to be happening is the way the AC has been chopped up into DC via the ink birds gives you a very choppy signal indeed and what's happening is the solid state relay is turning on and off really quickly I would imagine at 50 Hertz you know 50 times a second and what's that what that's causing is the pumps are then not able to start correctly they're turning on and off really quickly and it causes a big juddering uh, I'm not going to be able to get it on camera because I've obviously changed everything out so in the meantime I've swapped them out for these double pole double throw mechanical relays contactors which will do the job perfectly fine the main load for the heating element is still being switched by one of these that doesn't seem to be a problem because that's being switched by its own little 12 volt power supply which I think you might just be able to see just in that corner there there we go just just in there uh, so that power supply is running through uh, the solid uh, the STC 1000 let's get this right and that's allowing the heating element to turn on that seems to be a much cleaner uh, 12 volt signal than what's being put out by by the timers unfortunately these the, that outputs no good for switching something like this uh, so what we've had to do is we've also taken that 12 volt supply and we've run that through the back of all these relays sorry timers we've run that 12 volt signal through the back of all these timers and use the normally open contacts to provide a signal to the mechanical contactors so we can switch the pump on and off so basically we had to rejig it and instead of using the 12 volt output here um, we've actually also applied this new 12 volt signal from the power supply into and on top of the 12 volt that's being provided by the ink bird so these two cables here are the positive and negative for the 12 volt power supply so we're kind of boosting it in a way but what that's done is even though this is still giving out a 12 volt signal we needed to use the ink bird signal to allow us to continue to use the let me just show you down here I'll put this up there so we can move a little bit so we could continue to use these buttons on the front because I'd already wired these up I didn't have much uh, option when I had to reconfigure the whole thing so that unfortunately meant uh, doing it this way so if anybody knows a little bit more about the 12 volt output on these inkbird timers and how indeed they would influence the solid state relay to give a choppy output uh, if you've got a solution, maybe uh, a, maybe a snubber network over there or some smoothing capacitors that I could put across the 
input of the 12 volt DC line or maybe even the output, I don't know, it's probably going to be the input. But that would be, uh, I'd be much obliged if someone could give me some help there. But other than that, as you can see, everything is in place. So from top left to bottom right, we've got a, a relay which is operated by uh, these three interlocks here to allow us to let the countdown timer run down before we send any power to the pumps. Then we've got a pump one, pump two and pump three relay. Next row down we've got uh, the mains RCD in, the residual current device, and then two MCBs uh, overload protection. Then we've got the solid state relay for the heating element, and then over here we've got a double pole double throw relay which has a 12 volt output, um, and that's being switched. These are 12 volt relays up here, this is a 240 volt relay because we're using the uh, pump output for the rinse pump to also switch the mechanical relay here and what that's doing is it's got a 12 volt input going through the common to the normally open normally closed contacts and it's switching the polarity of the 12 volt signal so that can operate a mechanical uh, ball valve down there which allows liquid allows the rinse water to come out of our IBC header tank and into the pump otherwise we'd have to have a mechanical uh, a manual switch to turn the water off or fail that the water would be constantly coming out of this spray ball so when you turn the pump on it opens this valve allows the water to flow turn the pump off vice versa it closes it so that's what that little relay is there is doing Next to that we've got the 12 volt power supply which now we're going to have to use to uh, boost the 12 volt signal from these. Uh, still won't work with the solid state relays though so even though we've boosted the signal it still was choppy. So yeah like I say that's something we've discussed already. Then down at the bottom we have the buzz bars positive on the left, negative on the right or should I say live on the left and neutral on the right and then we've used these XLR connectors to go and send our signals out to all of the uh, on tank safety mechanisms, switching mechanisms so all these are all low voltage we've still got no 240 coming across here and these all operate the pumps independently when it's all geared up and then on the side We've got these C13 plugs and they're carrying uh, the power out to the pumps and the heating element. So everything that comes out of this machine is detachable. So we can take the cas the, the, the cask washer away if we have to and do any repairs on it. Or if we improve it then we just uh, build a new cask washer and we can plug it straight into this control panel. Then of course we've got uh, caustic temperature, little probe under here feeding the uh, temp probe to the STC, we've just extended the cable there, and then a heater on and off switch which breaks the signal to that heater relay just there. And then just for testing purposes we've had the um, meter in line with the power just so I can see exactly what current it's pulling and that's how I was able to troubleshoot the relays by uh, determining uh, which was pulling any current and which wasn't uh, and because of this failed switching from these Inkbird timers so a little bit tricky to get it finished up but there we go it is finished up nonetheless so we reset this there we go that's now primed and then if you want to see how it works I don't really have anything clear but we'll stick this on there and we've got a 35 second timer up there so I'm going to hit this timer button here and you'll see on there that's now turned on it's going to be a bit loud and then the valves opened up the water's flowing it's counting down we won't wait the full 
35 seconds so instead we'll just hit the emergency stop and then slowly but surely that valve then closes takes a few seconds for it to close there we go job done obviously with the caustic tank and the acid tank they're pulling on their own reservoir so they just pump immediately when they're turned on but the exact same concept and then down below we've got uh, drain valves to drain both tanks main drain valve to drain the rinse tank and then the three pumps just sat there nice and accessible so if we need to repair change or alter any of it that's doable and then just a quick peek around the back you can see we've got a plug here for the acid pump this is the pump that needs the most maintenance because over time there's a brass bushing in there that gets eaten by the acid and then if we have to change the um, caustic tank pump at any time I'll also retrofit one of these to it but basically it's just uh, the signal cables going in because I've tie wrapped all these together I thought it would just be easier to just plug that pump in there instead of hard wiring into the side of these pump housings because they've got anti-tamper screws on they're a bit of a pain in the ass to rewire them all so if I terminate the power output from the control panel into one of these sockets then it's just a case of plugging the new pump into the socket when we switch them out if we have to switch them out but that's kind of it so I'm sure I've lost a lot of uh, people on this because uh, it's been a bit of a disjointed build but it's functional nonetheless and it certainly has improved uh, how we're going to wa wash casks in the future and it's going to reduce the amount of time that a member has to stand here, a member of staff has to stand here operating the buttons because we can just hit the timer button, disappear and then when you come back it will have finished its cycle and you're ready to switch the casks onto the next phase. You'll also notice from one of my previous videos that we built this little splash back as well. This is mainly just to contain the spray that tends to come out of the keystone. I haven't got a cask really here to show you. There we go. So the keystone is open to the air as well when we're washing these casks and that just sprays out the back a little bit. So that'll catch all that. Uh, save us spraying caustic and acid onto the back wall and it'll run back into the tank as well so there we have it that I think ladies and gentlemen concludes the cask wash control panel build what do you think not the best uh, build video series but I'm sure if anyone wants is in the is in the trade and wants to build one of these they'll be able to get pretty close with what we've published on YouTube today well thank you very much <laughs>